Hi, yeah, he is Mickey. certainly a legend. Oh, Mikel. Mikel, well, I'll get the first question if you don't mind. Then Tim will get a question. <laughs> um, wow. Second half performance of your dreams? And the first half, I thought we still were really good. Obviously, we had some big chances that we didn't convert. And at one single action where we didn't defend the direct play well enough, uh, we got caught and, and the referee decided to, to award a penalty. But uh, straight away, you saw the reaction of the crowd after mm -hmm. conceding a goal, mm -hmm. which is really strange. Uh, and that shows the belief that they have in the team and, and what the team is transmitting to them. So the second half, I think we, we show real composure and maturity and, and clarity the way we wanted to, to attack them because we knew that's that's the way we wanted they wanted to defend and uh, i think we deserve to win the game under your tutelage things are changing at the football club we were we were sitting up there and we saw that we felt the goal goes in yeah. they still are behind you and, and i guess when we look at the first half versus the second half when you go into halftime do you have to change a lot because things changed mm. but do you have to say a lot to the players we had to change two things uh, because things changed mm. Time. When we look at the first half versus the second half, when you go into halftime, do you have to change a lot? Because things changed, mm. but do you have to say a lot to the players? We had to change two things, uh, especially one in defending that was critical for what they wanted to do against mm. us. And we corrected that. And then obviously we attacked better certain spaces that they weren't preventing and we wanted to exploit. But that's the talent of the place. Yeah, yeah absolutely. With Gabriel Jesus out, and a lot of talk about, oh, this could be the end of Arsenal and the doubts and that, was Eddie Nketiah an easy decision for you to make, to, to play him tonight? Very easy decision. He shows every day. He showed last season we had the games that we can trust him. I just gave him a big hug because I think he deserves the big time, the goal that he scored, the way he performed, not only the goal, but overall his performance, I think, was really, really good. When, when I look back to last season, the start of last season, and then we're here live to see your team play today with incredible amount of um, creativity and quality, how have you done it? How, how have you brought this team with these young players to be so grooved, both with the ball and without the ball, from movements in midfield, from, from fullbacks pushing inside? I mean, is it just on the training ground, developing? Well, it's because because we have really good players, that's first of all, and we have very good people. I think uh, starting from the people at the top, that in difficult moments they stick to, to the plan and what we want to do, and then that generated a big unity. And then obviously the moment that COVID allowed us to have some crowds and the crowd started to feel um, part of this team, I think that's when, when the team transformed. And then obviously there are things that you can do with certain players, and, and I think the recruitment part has been capital on, on that. Mikel, I get the impression you would have found the last six weeks watching the World Cup pretty difficult, wanting to get the season back up and running. Mm. Just talk us through how it went for you back here, having to watch it all and hope no one got injured and everyone just came back and hurry up the clock. Mm. Well, first of all, I had some time off that it was needed as well to break okay. it up. And then it was really intense. I, I watch football. I watch a lot of the World Cup. Uh, but we were really focused on the players that we had here and preparing how the players were going to get back. Because obviously psychologically they had big expectations all of them they thought that he could win the world cup so they were all going to be disappointed when they were coming back but uh, they made life so easy for us because they were all so eager to come back they came earlier than expected and they were ready to to come here to to join the team and and be ready for today we're still talking about this game when do you do your first thought for brighton away when's your first beginning of that next cycle before. The moment that I click the last second of this match that I watched tonight and tomorrow morning we are ready to go and it's and it's Brighton and this is gone. And in terms of enjoyment levels, Mikel, we've seen you three years today, by the way, congratulations, three Thank years you, ago today, your first uh, uh, job, first game, I should say, as Arsenal manager. In terms of the enjoyment over the last three years, I assume at times, of course, very, very difficult, but the enjoyment that you must get now, this season especially, must be... And it's hard because you're, you don't want to sit back and just enjoy it because yeah. there's work to do. But you must take some enjoyment from that. I do take a lot of enjoyment. But to be fair, I have taken a lot of um, enjoyment in difficult moments. To work with the people that we right. work every single day, that has made me really proud of. That it doesn't depend on results. It depends on the integrity of, of the people that you have next to you. Wow. Love it. Brilliant. Mikhail Teta, thank you so much for joining thank us. You, One more hug for Tim, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on the victory. That second half performance, just, I mean, it must be so enjoyable to play in. Yeah, it definitely is, you know. Of course, it was a big difference, the first half and the second half, and we're so happy that we could have 
we could make this turnaround. And obviously scoring three goals against West Ham is, is not easy. So it shows the quality we played with. We just had a chat with Matt Turner, of course, for our American audience. And he said that at halftime there wasn't too much frustration. Is that right? No, it was all calm because we know that we, we had a lot of possession, but we just wasn't being the most effective with it. So, you know, in the second half, we changed that. Robbie, do you want to ask? Just watching you play, um, just fascinated to know how your coach has developed you and how he wants you to develop, um, to produce assists and goals from a wide area. I see you making those runs inside, the fullback comes to the outside. Is that something that he's worked with you directly over the last couple of seasons? Definitely, definitely. Um, He's, he's coached me a lot and helped me a lot in terms of obviously trying to get in, in better goal scoring positions and obviously trying to be more creative for my team and create chances. But of course, I have to give credit also to my teammates. Mm. You know, the way we play, the way we, we have an understanding of each other, you know, it helps me a lot when I'm on the pitch. So that's important. Mm. How difficult has it been, Kyle, from the disappointment of England to getting yourself back in the right frame of mind and then playing as you perform today? Mm. Yes. Yeah, it's not easy. Um, of course, it was really disappointing to go out of the World Cup, you know. I thought we had the quality to go all the way, but, you know, we, we do have the quality to go all the way in future tournaments, I believe that. But, um, yeah, coming back here, of course, we, we had a few days off to relax the mind, but coming back here, you know, you have more motivation, you know, because obviously for me losing, you know, we have another chance to come back here and win. We're still in two, no, three competitions, so we have a chance to win. So this is my motivation and this is what's keeping me going. Tim? Yeah, you're, you're a joy to watch uh, on Thank the you. field, but what you stand for off the pitch is, is really just blowing me away. I, I, I must say that to you. I have a ton of respect for you. I've watched you over the last couple of years grow, grow into this man, and now when I watch you for England and when I watch you for Arsenal, the ball's always at your feet. The players, the fans, the country, the world, they expect greatness from you. How do you handle that balance at such a young age? Um, I think it's just... It's just my dream, you know. I'm living my dream. <laughs> and I'm just trying to be myself, you know, not be anyone different. And, you know, every time I get the chance to play here at the Emirates and play in an Arsenal shirt, play in an England shirt, I just want to give my best and give my all and try and win trophies and, you know, make the people happy. So this is all I try and do. I don't think too much about it, you know. Wonderful. But thank you for, for your words at the start. Absolutely. Thank you. Bukaya, remind us how old you were when you came to Arsenal. Well, wow, I was about seven or eight. Wow, OK. So you've seen a few <laughs> transitions over the years from Wenger um, down through a couple of managers and now with Mikel Arteta. It's the same club, but it's a little bit different. It certainly feels a bit different this season. Could you describe maybe what that difference mm. is? I think I understand what you're saying. Um, <laughs> to, descri to describe it, I, I'm not so sure, but I feel like, you know, it's just the, the way the whole club has just come together, you know, from top to bottom, you know, the way we come here and the fans receive us, you know, I feel from when I first started playing here to now, you know, the way I'm looking forward every time to come to the Emirates because I know the fans, you know, no matter what, even if we go one nil down, you know, they're cheering for us, you know, that normally doesn't happen. So that, first of all, gives us more belief and we have a fantastic uh, manager. We have new signings that have come in and helped us so much and, you know, we just have so much belief that each game we can win it. So I think that's the... The, the biggest change and you know if we don't win the game I feel like it hurts us much more than mm. it used to you know we feel like we're really hurt so yeah you're seven points clear mm -hmm. Robbie Musto said after the game they're just brilliant they're just brilliant they look a little bit like Manchester City they're just brilliant you are in pole position and you're going to get asked this question a thousand times I was, was going to ask it <laughs> okay, I'm asking it <laughs> it is your dream we know that the staying power. It's about, of course, the staying power. You got it? Not you, I mean everyone. <laughs> I think, well, if, if, just to be clear, you're talking about winning the... Title. The title, yeah. okay. Um, now, I think, obviously, right now, it's still a dream. We have to take each game as it comes, you know. You know, everyone always says the same answers, but <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand here and, and tell you because I'm not, I'm not God. But you know, I really hope we can do it. And you know, if we keep playing like this and the fans keep supporting us like this, you know, we have a, a massive chance. So. Well, they're supporting you here, and they're supporting you mm. from the United States as well. You're massively popular in America, Arsenal, and you as well, Bukai. So listen, we know you're a busy man. Thank you so much. I'll take the Thank mic. You. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us Thank live on Good American TV. Thank to the programme, Frank LeBeuf joins us today, a programme really which is all about the Premier League giving a full calendar of Boxing Day matches today. We'll start off with the league leaders who came from behind to beat West Ham by three goals to one. All of Arsenal's goals coming in the second half in Ketia Martinelli and Saka giving 
Arteta's side, three more points, and as it stands, it puts them seven clear at the top of the table. City, of course, in action later on in the week. Newcastle moved up to second. We'll speak about them a little later on. But let's start off, shall we, with the Gunners. Well, Craig just pretty much have started where they left off. They're really good, especially in the second half today. No, they did, and uh, obviously West Ham taking the lead, uh, hitting on the counter-attack. I mean, I, I don't know about the, the lads. I didn't have a problem with the penalty. No. Uh, I thought it was good refereeing from Michael Oliver. He was right on the spot. Just because Jared Bowen doesn't go down, it uh, doesn't mean there's no contact. So good spot there. Uh, Antonio was a problem over the top, and that's at times. Uh, but yeah. They're a good team to watch as well, aren't they, Frank? Very much so. I mean, uh, I love that the fact that they had, the con they had in control of the game for 90 minutes. Even if they conceded a goal, you know, it was mostly a contra-attack. But I like the enthusiasm that they put into the, into the game. They, they want to win every time. They put the pace, they go forward, they, they, they imagine scenarios on top of it, how you can uh, uh, trick the, the, the others, but always with a good pace. is not a tiki-taka that you know that I'm, I'm not a big friend <laughs> with. Uh, they're very vertical and uh, they have a master. They have a master. That young Odegaard is getting better and better, even if he was very lucky on the on the assist on Saka because I think he wanted to shoot, shoot on goal. But really, uh, everybody has a good part. You know, the defend, defenders do, does what they have do the, what they have to do. Ramsdale had one save to make and he did. Uh, and uh, on t uh, at front, you know, I thought and Keta had been working hard, you know, to help the team. It's been uh, awarded by the, 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 the third goal that uh, the Gunners called. Everybody did, does the job. And uh, even Shaka, Shaka in the middle of the park, I mean, with party and other guard, they, it's why they, they, they win games, because they win, they win all the ball they have to win. Everybody is spot on, they work hard all together, and it's why you have to be careful. What, if you want to bring somebody, you have to make sure that he's going to fit to the, to, the, to the squad and doesn't destroy this atmosphere. Well, there was a, a huge slice of luck, as Frank talked about with the first goal. That yes. Saka scored. Yes. And by the way, great strength from him in the lead up to it. I mean, him, I mean, I suppose in some way, perfect scenario for Arteta. Eventually, young Nketia gets his goal. So there's always going to be a big question there. There is until the, the window closes. Martinelli and Saka on the score sheet, the two wide guys that have been brilliant for them. And all this talk about, but well, there's been some talk and we've indulged in it in Joe Felix. And yes. would that be a potential for a player to come in? Maybe short term, but but you're not really taking, you know, you're not taking Odegaard out of the team. Mm -hmm. You're not moving him out of position. He's playing too well. He's the captain. He's offering. He was man of the match, I think, in, in the game by the, the by the host broadcaster in the UK. So you're not really changing. I tell you, the, the one thing that annoys me though, in, in a sense, and it's not on the field, it's just slightly off the field, is Mikel Arteta. Right? He, he can't he help can, himself. He, yeah. No, I know he can't help himself, and I understand managers bobbing up and down crazily. But there's a technical area there for a reason. And at one point in the second half, if I was Sufal, I think I might have tried to pick him up and throw him back in the technical area. <laughs> He's getting too close. Right. Too much. It's, it is too much. It is too much. And the fourth official has to say, look, look. I mean, he's almost on top of players when they're running down the... When, sometimes when you're running back as a defender or running forward as an attacker, you have to just leave the pitch momentarily. If you're bending a run or you're going shoulder to shoulder with somebody. He stood there. And also, he was, he's, he's out with the old imaginary cards, as he was for the, uh, the challenge on Kieran Tierney, I think, by Jared Bowen, which wasn't an elbow, the arm was up. And so there are a few things about him that's off the footballing side that I think he needs to sort of rein in a little bit. But in terms of on the field, they've just, as you said, picked up where they left off. But the, from a footballing side, the players seem to buy what, whatever he's selling, Stevie. Well, not only are they buying what he's selling, but they actually make it look pretty easy. You know, they all look comfortable. They all seem to know exactly where everybody's going to be. Uh, they seem to know everybody's strengths. I mean, again, that's one of the keys of a great side. When you know what, what, the, what the positives and negatives are of the players around you, then when you're passing the ball to them, then simple things like putting it on the right foot or putting it in front of them or putting it behind them. All of these things that sometimes teams can't do. They make it look really simple. They can win the league? No. No, I'd still say City. See, here's the problem. You've, you ask yourself, right? There's not, there's going to be a, there a lot of people will be pleased for Eddie and Ketia. Young boy coming in, lots of pressure on him, Gabriel Jesus out. 
Uh, all right, he's had some game time in the past. He's not he's not a fledgling, but you know he's not somebody who's he's, he's been looked upon to carry a team. And if you look at it, they, you know Arsenal fans will be thinking, oh yeah, this is brilliant. When you look at the big picture, is he a step down from Jesus? Of course he is. Mm. If Jesus was fully fit now, would we have, would the conversation change in terms of that question? You yes. Asked? Yeah. You still be going, said he. Yeah. Still going to be tough. You take Jesus out and put a less experienced player in who has got himself a goal in this game, and then think about it for the rest of the season. There's more than fifty percent of the season gone. There's, we're not even at a halfway stage yet. Yeah. That that's a big challenge. Unless they know Jesus is coming back a little quicker than maybe he's been reported. I definitely think they're going to have to beef up that area, as I said the other day, even if it's a short-term move. But it is, it is tough, because if you if you do bring a Jao Felix in, for example, he's not coming there to sit on the bench. Right. But then you can't not, you can't not play Martinelli, you yeah. can't not play Saga. Do you play Felix... And you mix it with the formula that's working at the moment. It's, it, it, it is, it's such a fine balancing act. I mean, I think of, I think of Newcastle back in the 90s, when they, they signed a guy called Tina Espria. And they completely messed everything up. The, the, the way they were playing was similar to Arsenal. It was all flow and it was all easy. Everybody knew their job. And then when they made that change, it kind of fell apart. And they ended up losing the league to Manchester United. So you have to be careful uh, uh, when you bring somebody in. On top of it, you know, when, you, um, when you're talking about Gabriel Jesus, before he got injured, you know, the, some criticism came up saying that he didn't, well, wasn't scoring enough goals, you know, so nothing is perfect in a perfect...